Ready? All right, good morning. Thank you for coming out. Can you hear me okay? Um, our speaking order this morning, I'll, I'll introduce, then we'll hear from our public utility director, Laura Briefer. We'll hear from Clint Meekum, who runs emergency management for Salt Lake County. Then from Richard, or who we call Bud Bowden, who runs emergency management for Salt Lake City. He's our division chief. And Salt Lake City Council Member Dan Dugan, whose district we are in right now. Thank you for being here this morning and an even bigger thanks to the hundreds, perhaps, th perhaps thousand volunteers who came out here last night. When I went home around two in the morning, we still had many, many volunteers filling sandbags. And because of their diligent work and the great pre-planning and then deployment of these teams, we could have had hundreds of houses impacted and instead we had relatively few. At this point, to our knowledge, no homes have sustained major damage. This is a tribute to the teamwork between the city, the county, and the residents of Salt Lake City. This is what we do. We show up, we work hard together. We're really good at it. And I am so proud of Salt Lakers who showed up last night, some people even without shoes on, to work side by side with people of all walks of life. Probably filled at least several hundred, if not that, more than a thousand sandbags. You can see them stacked up behind me today. We will have more updates for you later this afternoon and we'll have some information about uh, additional volunteer needs. At this point though, we would welcome volunteers at about 1.30 and onward to help us finish bagging the three piles of sand, two here and one on 1600 East. Um, we will have all that kind of information for our volunteers to know where to go and how to help on the Salt Lake City Public Utilities uh, all of the social media streams and the website. Laura Briefler will speak to you next and give you an update. And I want to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Just that uh, 1500 East overnight, the water flowing from 1500 East and uh, down the east side of the street into a culvert there has compromised some of that roadway around Blaine Avenue. We want to encourage people, obviously the road is closed there, don't think you can go through it, please do not. And we did do a voluntary evacuation, which to our knowledge, none of the residents did take advantage of. It just out of cons an overabundance of caution in case that culvert became clogged, which at this point it hasn't, we've had eyes on it every second of the night and still. Um, but in case that culvert would have become clogged, we did a voluntary evacuation on the south side of Glen Arbor, which is the south side of Christmas Street, and on Blaine Avenue as well, and then on the Downington Circle on the west side of uh, 1500 East in case the spillover would have happened. Fortunately, it hasn't. That's my updates. We'll go through the lineup and then happy to take questions at the end. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm Laura Briefer, Director of Salt Lake City Public Utilities, and I'm here to give an overnight update. Um, before I do that, I wanted to also address, you know, on Monday we talked to um, our community and the media about our preparedness actions for in advance of runoff this season. And I'm here to say that starting that flood preparation at the end of February, has paid off for us in the mitigation of damage of this situation. Um, when we have runoff like this, um, we calculate the capacity of the system to account for that runoff. And what we always understand is that something could happen upstream that can make those calculations off, be off. So for instance, here we had debris come down in the middle of runoff that uh, apparently clogged uh, the storm drain here, which caused us to need to do overflow for Emigration Creek. Our teams with the city and the county and all of our emergency management planners um, were very successful in being able to mobilize to mitigate any serious impacts from this. Um, with respect to our overnight updates, I want to say that Salt Lake City and Salt Lake County crews worked through the night. We were here all night, I think um, I was here until about 2.30 in the morning, uh, got back here at 6 a.m. And in between, we had crews um, not only in this area, but further down uh, in the system, on the storm drain system, monitoring the conditions. Um, while we have reports, as the mayor mentioned, we have reports of some minor damage to a few homes in the area. 
We did not receive any new reports of damage overnight to, to homes, which is great. Um, overnight, Emigration Creek uh, reduced flows from over 150 cubic feet per second um, to its current 90 cubic feet per second, which um, is helping us tremendously in continuing to mitigate any flood issues. Um, and as the mayor mentioned, we do have erosion um, at 1500 East and Blaine Avenue. And not only are we asking people not to drive there, but we're also asking pedestrians and bicyclists to stay away from there. Um, the road, uh, we're currently assessing the road to see if there is damage to the road, um, but the sidewalk there is definitely damaged and we don't want anybody walking over there. Um, that is my report right now and I'll turn it over to um, Clint Meekham from Salt Lake County. Thank you very much, Laura. Uh, my name is Division Chief Clint Meekham. I am the Salt Lake County Emergency Management Director. I am uh, very proud to be here standing alongside our partners in Salt Lake City um, to provide support and um, respond to the needs of the Salt Lake City uh, citizens uh, that have been impacted by this flood. Uh, I'm, my remarks will be brief. Um, Salt Lake County Flood Control has been doing a phenomenal job again with its municipal level partners like Salt Lake City Public Utilities since the beginning of March to try and make sure that, that these streams remain clear of debris and that we minimize the impact that we have from uh, this potential runoff season. Um, as you can see, uh, we've got a lot of water. There's been a lot of sandbags thrown. There's a lot of effort that's been put forth here in this community. Uh, to again to protect those homes, protect their property, and protect their citizens. So again, we appreciate immensely uh, everybody that came out during the volunteer event last night to help, to help make sure that we have uh, proper amounts of materials to again protect our citizens. But we do ask out of an abundance of caution, as the mayor and director briefer have stated, if you do not have business up in this area, please, please, please stay away. As you can see from the scene behind me, we've got lots of heavy equipment operating. Um, we do not want to get anybody hurt because we've gotten careless at this point in the incident. So again, we have roads undermined, we have sidewalks undermined, um, and we have lots of equipment. So please, if you don't have business here, please stay away just for your safety. And again, I very much appreciate the opportunity to be here and again support our, our Salt Lake City partners. And we will continue to be, be here and be in support of our partners throughout the duration of the incident for as long as we're needed. Thank you. Um, Chief Bowden. Thank you, Chief Meekham. Uh, really quick, everybody's heard really the briefs of where we're at right now situation-wise, so I don't want to reiterate that. Um, I am Division Chief Richard Bowden. I am with the Fire Department assigned to our Emergency Management Div Division, and as that, I am the current Emergency Manager for Salt Lake City. Um, I know everybody here has, obviously you have your weather people involved, uh, but to give you a quick brief for the public. Uh, the expectation is right now we do have a cold front that's sitting overhead this morning. That's expected to start moving through at about 10 o'clock as well and starting to clear. However, in the meantime, we are looking at some brief uh, heavy precipitation, and with that, that'll be transitioning to some snowfall. As it does that, the overall confidence is that we will be receiving up to about a quarter inch of water, and the concern is with that impacts um, with what we're currently doing. The impact right now with that small amount of a quarter inch of rain. We're not expecting a huge impact in what the current flows are. So we'll continue to do what we're doing right now, working with our county partners, working with the city uh, underneath the mayor's leadership, director briefers leadership uh, to continue to work with what we're doing. Um, as for evacuations, quick numbers for you. I know that we mentioned that it was all voluntary. That still is in place. And we're looking at this point of approximately 98 homes that have had impact just in that voluntary evacuation. Also, as what was mentioned, we are not currently utilizing uh, a evacuation center or a sheltering location. However, if that changes, we will update that information as well. Again, thank you to our residents that came out last night. Um, my office is up and operational, the Emergency Coordination Center, and we'll continue to uh, work with those volunteers and getting people out and making sure our Joint Information Center is getting the information to the public. So. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Councilman Dugan. And we'll go from there. Good morning. Uh, I'm Councilmember Dan Dugan of the district here, and I just want to shout out to the neighborhoods and all the volunteers from last night. We've said that a number of times, but I can't reiterate it enough. The outpouring of support and help uh, all night long. We were all here late in the evening, and 
the volunteers stayed even later than we did. So that's that's an awesome job. I also got a shout out to the city and the county for all the, the coordination efforts that we've been uh, experiencing today. A couple things on the safety side. Safety is paramount here. I love all the volunteers, but we got to remain safe. We've got to watch out for our buddies when we're out there. It's a team effort. It's a team sport right now. The water's fast. It's uh, cold. So we gotta be we got to be careful of that nature. Uh, second thing is we will be continuing to need volunteers throughout the days and we're working right now on a, uh, a coordinated effort to make sure that volunteers know where to go so that they can uh, provide the best support at in the best time. Re reiterate, 1.30, we're looking for about 50 volunteers to meet at across some days at the Chevron station at that parking lot to fill sandbags. 1.30, about 50 volunteers meet here with a coordinated effort to fill sandbags and then move on to another place to fill sandbags. Have a great day. All right. Keep it up. Thanks. I'll tack on to what council members said that we're working right now on a separate location where tomorrow and through the weekend we can have volunteers come fill sandbags and then they'll be transported to the other parts of the city where they will be needed. And we would appreciate as many volunteers as can come out. Still stay tuned to the public utilities feed to find out where that location will be. Are there any questions for us? We are looking to acquire resources. Late last night, we were uh, contacting vendors for more sand resources. So, um, you know, if not just for this event, um, for any anticipated future events, as runoff continues this spring, we will need more resources such as sand. Thank you. I was going to mention, um, I, I did sign the emergency declaration in the middle of the stream last night, and that opens up our access to federal resources, financial resources, um, so that declaration is in place. Anything else? All right, thank you for coming out. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got cold. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Good. No.